Thank you for joining us for this particular segment. This, this I have to say, is an important issue. And, and as you you tend to know that I try to have guests who could speak to different sides to this. Um, joining us right now is a gentleman. He's a, he's a friend. He's somebody who talks very frank whenever we talked about policing issues. We uh, I've, I've done multiple conversations, not only with him, but with other chiefs where we've actually had other chiefs be part of a conversation. Uh, and uh, I, I want to get uh, the take from uh, retired Whitman police chief, Scott Benton, who has been in uh, law enforcement for what, 30 plus years. Yeah, 30, yeah over 33. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Scott Benton will talk with us and give his take on the passage of Senate Bill 2963. Uh, this right now is just awaiting the governor's signature. Again, this is a bill that came out of committee, was voted on last week, um, and now is where we're, we're waiting to see if the governor is going to veto it, uh, or will this will there be amendments? Or knowing that we here we are, we're in the middle of December, this could ultimately die as the legislative session ends, and it could be picked up and maybe retooled at the beginning of the next legislative session. Uh, Chief, welcome to uh, the conversation. Uh, knowing that you've been in law enforcement, you and I, and, and I know I, I usually try to set the, um, the visual for folks, that you're not somebody who's just, you come from, you know, you were a police officer. Your dad was a police officer. It's in your blood. You've yeah. lived this. Um, yeah. Knowing that something like this has been put forth, give me your thoughts as we're sitting here today. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I, I obviously I appreciate um, you having me on, um, as always. And I, I do think that you're right. It, 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 it definitely is something that needs to be addressed. The trouble is, how do we address it? And um, yeah, you know, my dad and my uncle, both police officers, um, you know, of course, they came on in the late 60s and the 70s, one in the city of Brockton, one in Bridgewater, different times, right? Policing is ever evolving. It's a fluid thing, just like police work and doing a job on the street. So as an example to this bill that I noticed, you cannot choke holes a band. So that means that if I am fighting with a suspect, he gets me on the ground He's going for my gun. I have nothing I can do. I have, I have, I have no, no other means. I somehow get around him. And the only thing I can do to control this situation is to choke him, not choke him to kill him. Because you can choke somebody out, they pass out, you cuff them, you control the situation. Everybody, I think, can agree that you don't have to kill somebody. But if that's the only means I have, you can't just arbitrarily say, well, you can't do that, because that isn't what police work is. It's not one size fits all. You can't just, you would have to have something that would be a million pages to try to address every possible scenario that, that could arise. So just like a flashlight, right? You are not allowed to strike anybody with a flashlight. But if all I have in my hand is a flashlight and you have my gun, or I feel, I, and this is the other thing, what I believe to be imminent, serious bodily injury or death, then I'm going to hit you with the flashlight. I'm going to put it in my report. I'm not going to lie about it, but that's the means that I have. That's the only thing, thing that I have. So, so I'm going to avail myself of it because I want to survive, right? So it's not, you know, some of the things that are being thrown out there. And I, and I didn't hear one. What, what brings this whole thing? You know, you, the George Floyd incident. I think I, I didn't hear anybody, at least that I ever talked to in law enforcement, say, "Oh no, no, the, the policemen were right on that." But you don't have incidents like that going. Massachusetts police officers are one of the most highly trained and proficient police officers in the country. The training in, the, in this area is by far, in my opinion, superior to anywhere else. It's worth noting, again, uh, Senate Bill 2963 uh, voted uh, last week. The Senate passed this bill uh, 28 to 12, and the House voted it 9267. This wasn't necessarily something that was voted along party lines. We know that, that, that you know there's there's vastly more Democrats than there are Republicans. There were Democrats who actually decided to vote and say nay 
against this. What I want to ask you, Chief, is, is that this particular bill uh, looks to institute changes, looks to make sure that there's, there's provisions that candidates are, it's almost like licensed, per se, to be a police officer. But then there's also something to establish a commission, a special commission, the Peace Officer Standards and Training Commission, uh, that could actually set the, the certification standards and also decertify officers. They may violate them. Yep. There's, a, there's a catch to this. And I believe that the Massachusetts Chief, Chiefs of Association actually is not for this because my understanding is, is you're not going to have somebody with a law enforcement background or somebody who comes from the field like you would be a perfect person to sit on this because you're somebody who has spent 33 years of your life as part of your career uh knowing the proper way to 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 be you you rose to the ranks and you you got to the point where you know you were respected enough to you were chosen to head up your own department yeah I mean, that, that's part of the problem. It, it, things get uh, political. Like I noticed even re reading it, like some of the committees, like one even specifies um, like a police officer from the Western part of the state, like what the Western part of the state's better than any other part of the state. The decertification becomes an arbitrary thing. Like who's, who is this commission? Does, does somebody, how do they determine it? What is, what is the determinant? They just don't like, well, this guy had three complaints, you know, what we're going to decertify him. Um, I did find one thing interesting though, which is something that it, on the management end of things we've always complained about. So you talk about a hack job, Civil service commissioners are the biggest waste of taxpayers' money in the state. Five people that have never been police officers, they're lawyers. They come from different, whether they were retired milkman or whatever they did. And they wind up hearing a case that they make a determination on and they have, they have exactly zero perspective of what a police officer does or what the expectation is. And at, say every out of every 10 uh, uh, cases of appeal that they hear, they overturn seven of eight, seven to eight of them against management of the municipality. And I notice in this, they don't even want to say there is no appeal to the Civil Service Commission if you're decertified. Yeah, I wonder why that is. Because they know civil service is a joke. Civil service only exists because they represent the rank and file. That's why the communities all, you know, they, they want to pull out of civil service and the unions go crazy because they want, let them take it to court. Let them go to a court. You know, some of these offices, and I can tell, I can speak to some that I, you know, in discipline cases I've been involved in. If this was the private sector, you'd hand them a box, you'd tell them to clean out their desk and hit the road. And that would be the end of it. But the system is flawed. It's grossly flawed. You want to clean up you know, and, and make an impact on cleaning up the police profession and, and weeding out the bad apples and holding people accountable. Well, it starts with abolishing the Civil Service Commission. Not all the civil service is bad, but the commission is a joke. And yeah, we're speaking with the retired Whitman Police Chief Scott Benton getting his his reaction on the, uh, the police reform bill, uh, Senate Bill 2963, that actually came out of committee and has already been voted on awaiting signature from, from the governor um, as we, we talk about this. Uh, the other thing that the, the Massachusetts Chiefs of, Chief of Police Association has actually warned is that having a commission with such a makeup could cause issues with due process. I mean, with, without a doubt, it's like, uh, you know, I was saying earlier, you take the Board of Bar of Overseers, 12 members, eight of them are attorneys, right? They want to have, they want to have a nine member panel, predominantly not law enforcement people. The, the, do you think doctors are on the, are on the American Medical Association Review Board? I mean, again, it, it's a police officer who's, who's trained, who knows what a police officer does. It's like saying, we're going to build a bridge, but you know, Maybe we'll ask one engineer what he thinks, but we don't really need any engineers here. We'll figure it out. We'll, you know, we'll weld some steel together and see how it works. It, it's, it's without question, there is an Im immense amount of power that a police officer has. He gets to take away your freedom. I get that. And there are issues that need to be addressed, but there's a mechanism to address them. 
Um, and you certainly can address them uh, through, the, through those mechanisms, whether it be the court or through legislation and things like that, similar to probably uh, what they are trying to do um, here. But it has to be, um, you know, you want to, it's almost like you want to tell us how to, how to do our job Monday morning quarterback after the fact. You know, it's like working without a net. You want to take away the immunity. You want to take away all this stuff. Well, guess what? Why don't we just, why don't law enforcement take a couple of weeks off and see how you make out? Like you can't, you, you just can't dictate uh, this is how you're going to do things and not have the people that you expect to do it be at the table telling you, this is why we can't do this. This is why we can't. Okay, well, let's see. You know, aren't you better off sitting down with the people that are going to do it and finding out where the problems are before you go vote something and then just say, okay, figure it out. Kind of like, you know, what they did with the civil marijuana stuff. There's a fine in there that if you smoke marijuana, I can give you a civil citation and you can crumple it up and throw it in the trash because it doesn't mean anything. It was a waste of time because there's no mechanism to force you to pay it or anything. See, but that was nobody sat down and talked to anybody. That was just pushed through. So it, it's it's frustrating. Plus, I see they're going to create like nine commissions out of this thing, or something like that, or eight. I mean, so in this day and age of like people worried about money and stuff, this whole thing is going to create <laughs> create its own agency. They're also going to have an executive director, a chairperson. I mean, you know, I don't know. I, I, I don't, I think I see problems with it. I, I definitely see problems with it. I think it's easy enough, easy enough for us to anybody who looks at this and wants to share their opinion, have a, a Monday morning quarterback point of view. I think I, as you had said, what would be the proper way? What would be the best case scenario for this uh, action? Should the governor veto it? And hopefully it can be something that is put forth, but that there's more, more people who are qualified and more people who want to see action taken at the table and discussing this. Yeah. So I think, um, and this was obviously when I was working, but you had uh, President Obama, and I might not have agreed with everything, but his 21st century policing pillars and that whole um, uh, thought that he came with, uh, came to the table with and brought about that change he said he let law enforcement, he picked law enforcement chiefs from around the country and had them sit in a room and formulate and develop what do we need to do here. So you have a people that know policing and they make effective change. And, that, and those pillars did, do work, did work, um, you know, but it was thoughtful legislation. It was a thoughtful process. People, stakeholders, everybody was at the table. You know, it took into account everything. Whereas this seems, I don't, I don't know, but it seems to me like, you know, it's almost like a knee jerk reaction to some of the things that are going on around in the country. And I'm not saying they're not serious things, but the knee jerk thing comes from, okay, well, we better do something in Massachusetts. What are we going to do? And they just want to push something through because some legislators want to look good and, you know, say, oh, okay, yeah, well, look at what we push through. Well, doesn't mean that it's good. It just means, oh, yeah, we, we get to say we, we push this through. I mean, you know, effective is better than, you know, just pushing something through that doesn't have any effect at all. Probably one other thing, I guess, that was retained some uh, some language that was retained in the conference com committee report is about no knock warrants. And this has to do with there's a child under the age of 18 or a person over the age of 65 within the premises that is targeted for such a warrant. Um, what are your thoughts in regards to, what, what, what's the purpose of a no-knock warrant? And, and now that you have these restrictions, how does, does, this, does this hinder policing or is this something minor? Well, it, it, it hinders it in the sense then again, there is, it's fluid. So now you have some piece of legislation saying, no, you will not do this. No knock warrants are designed, obviously, with officer safety in mind, because they believe that obviously there is a threat there, whether it be a weapon, um, you know, uh, violent people there with bops that show violent uh, history that they've had, um, that could be their um, destruction of evidence and things like that. So there's a reason for them. Um, 
obviously there are some some tragedies that have gone on but again how many warrants across the country go on per day you know it's like there's like 11,000 arrests across the country a day and we talk about the George Floyd arrest like that was the only one that happened and again I'm not diminishing it but let's look at the whole picture here and then like I said to just throw out well you know if you're 65 if you're this Anytime you start limiting things, there's nothing wrong with saying, hey, listen, you have to justify why you need this. And this, these are the parameters. And if you can satisfy them, then fine. You get, you know, knock one. But to just say, nope, if somebody's 65, well, let, listen, we, this is the real world, right? We all know there are, there are people that know, hey, my kid's dealing drugs out of the house. I know it. I don't do anything. Well, whose fault's that? Right. So like if something happens, everybody wants the police to apologize. Well, no, geez, an innocent person got shot or something happened. Well, if you if you are, you know, if you're with somebody who's dealing drugs, has a long criminal record and is a scumbag and you get hurt. Well, guess what? That's the way it goes. I mean, you know, why are we apologizing for doing our job? See, that's people. People want like an apology. Well, no, you shouldn't have done that. Well, no. You know, and I and I don't and I do not like the argument of, well, you know what you signed up for. Nobody, no, you know, nobody signed up to be abused, kicked or threatened or, or the attacks that are going on in the country now against police officers. But if you have it solved, because deep down in places that people, as one person once said, don't talk about you want us to be on the street. They need police officers on the street. You know, Colonel Jessup had a little bit of a different twist to it. But the point was you can't sit here and have it both ways. You can't sit here and say, yeah, you need us there, but yeah, you're going to do this. You know? So um, I think, I, I think that having a conversation um, and, and making effective changes is, is all positive. As I said, the pillars um, that uh, president Obama, the 21st century policing pillars came up with, but to just throw stuff and arbitrarily stay, I think it is good that they're going to do a certification for police officers, I think um, part of it though, do you know how long we fought for funding, for training? And now they're gonna submit and they're gonna fund this commission too. Right. So it's like, good luck with that. I wanna right. see where that money comes from. Well, probably you know? the, Quinn, the, the money they used to be put into the Quinn bill. Yeah, that's, yeah, they won't. <laughs> that would be nice. Yeah. We, like I said, we fought with them. Uh, we fought with them. Fire had the funding thing. We tried to come up with it and come up with it. Hey, can you do this? Finally, we got it. But I, it was years, years we fought it. And you would think, well, you want trained policemen, right? Why wouldn't you have a, a, a funding mechanism for funding all their training? It only makes sense. And, and they should pull it all under one umbrella. You have all these different academies. It should be much more... Uh, condensed and, 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 and run that way. Maybe you have three academies, but they're all run the same way or something like that. So He is uh, police chief, retired police, Whitman police chief, Scott Benton, who's been my guest. Chief, thank you for your time. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for uh, having me on, Kevin, as always. We'll have you back on uh, soon if we have any kind of update on this. Yeah, thanks. I appreciate it.